The following program was produced or sponsored by a community member. The content, views, and opinions expressed are the sole responsibility of the producer and do not reflect those of Malden Access Television, the City of Malden, or your cable provider. MATV welcomes your comments. Please call us at 781-321-6400 or email us at access at matv.org. Welcome to MNBL Action on this very fluffy, snowy afternoon. I am Brad with Benton alongside Go Rep, Go Behind the Camera and on the microphone. Yes, I said he has a live mic. I always have a live mic every week. Well, you know, the word, you know, the emails have come in and people... Oh, okay, yeah, right. right, okay, please. It's Moving on. from this guy... Cliff from Williams in my, in my shot, but, you know, he's coaching Cliff his Cliff Williams team, so. is a, he's a championship coach, and why is the Kings banner falling down? Well, the Pistons banner has been fixed, but the Kings banner is uh, now falling. Yes. So. So Good news or bad news? That means the Kings be, uh, the front runners for the championship this year? Maybe. Since the Pistons were earlier? Maybe it's, a, maybe it's the turn of luck that the Kings need. It could be. They do play later today against the Pistons. Third sure, game. Shockingly enough. Third game in this three-game series. And, of course, who was the middle game? Uh, some other teams. I haven't looked at my, uh, my schedule just yet because we are with the Lakers and the defending champion Sixers who do have that target on their back. Wearing red, and everybody's eyes are red when they play them. Wen's you of the Lakers, along with Donnell Bailey, well, Joseph, would, Joseph, Billy Hurley. It would be something, Brad, and if, Sean Fortier. It would be something, Brad, if uh, the Lakers, I should say the defending champion Sixers, could give the Lakers their first loss of the season. Well, if you were paying attention to Around the Rim on this, this past week at ATILive.com, you would know the Lakers already have a loss. Oh, no, I wasn't paying They're attention. They're 2-1. I was too busy directing the show. Yes, yes. Why pay attention to a show you're directing? I understand completely. Even though it's usually the guy who sets up the, uh, the, the pages that screws everything up anyway. Well, that's the guy I'm watching Yes. to make sure he doesn't, so I'm not listening to what Nestor had to say. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes he doesn't put the right things in the right order. Nestor? Yeah. Yeah. But it's his show, and it's an award they have it show. Been, they haven't been in the right order yet this year. So you go to atlive.com. You can see all MNBL updates. Uh, you can go to mnbl19.tripod.com for the official MNBL site. We are with one ref today, because as we are taping this on Sunday, January 19th, no, 18th, today's the 18th, right? Yeah, 18th. January 18th. It is uh, about a foot and a half of snow there. out. There's a foot and a half? Well, it will be by the time the game's over. All right, over. so there's not a foot and a half snow out there. Well, Don't depends. get me nervous. I'm going to have to go out there. All right, the all right. So there's probably about, there's probably, well, you do, have you, have you, unbelievable, they know that MNBL's going to be here this week and they haven't plowed the parking lot. I love the city of Malden. Love the city of Malden. Love the city of Malden. They haven't sanded the streets either. Oh, wait till Tuesday night talk, or today's nightly talk. I'll be going all off on that. Yep. There anyway, moving on. <laughs> oh, yeah, I heard I'm going to be a guest on there. Yes, you are, Brad. I should have called my agent. Someone did call your agent. I want all purple M&Ms in my dressing room. Okay. That's all I ask for. I don't ask for much. And flavored water. Well, I hear you on the flavored water part. Yes. Wenzhou with the rim. Couldn't get it to go. Loose ball, 40 year from Billy Hurley. Very unselfish play by Billy Hurley. Three minutes in, we have our first two, bat, two points of the game. Finally. Sixers are trying to work it into the big man, but he keeps coming out to the free throw line. There he is. He's in the middle. They're not hitting him. I don't know what that was. That was a that was a very awkward error shot. It was an awkward attempt at a basket by Blake Coughlin. That was Blake Coughlin who went up with that awkward shot. How's your headache? You ready? <laughs> Chris Rogers comes into the. Sh to the early games to watch the action here at MNBL with a gas face. Sammy Jean over to Dimitri, who should be in the middle, but he thinks he's Kevin Garnett draining the perimeter shot. Well, he hit it nonetheless. You can't he complain did. about that. He did. He's the Kevin Garnett of the MNBL. Okay. Big man who plays high. And then speaking of big man who goes down low, Billy Hurley just lost the ball. And Sammy Jean, the kid I like to call Kid Mountain Dew. 
Kid Mountain Dew. Yeah, it's a long story. He stole a coach's Mountain Dew. It wasn't his. Ended up drinking the rest of it, and the coach was like, where's my Mountain Dew? So is that the short version of the long story? That was, yep. Or is that the long version of the short story? That's the, well, he is short. <laughs> and the other coach ain't that much taller, but he is taller. Okay. So the, he would be the long version. So we got two to two here with the four minutes gone in the first. Yes. With the combination of four. Yeah, but we do tens. tens yes, I know, but tens, I'm just letting the people tens, know. Tens. It's early. It's Listen, not we know, we know you can add. Gone. We know you can add. Four gone, combination of four. Oh, okay, all right. That's, That's where the, I was going. It works, it works. It's not what we do, but it works. Jimmy Jean way cross court to Dimitri Lodimus. Goes on Wenju, falls down. Pulls he, a. Um, he fell on his butt. Rajon Rondo. Barely looks oh, up, sees Wenju breaking. And he blows the bunny! The butt cheeks got tight. There's another break around now, Bailey. Two on one. I don't know if you want to give it to a win. He just blew the bunny. Draws the foul on Carlos Escobar. He probably did the smart thing there, Brad. Like you said, wins just blew the bunny. So the best thing you do in that situation. Yeah, a little lack of confidence there. Well, I don't blame him. He had a wide open shot. And he blew it. It was by himself. It wasn't like he had a defender rushing That's on him. That's why you use the backboard. It's the most easiest shot in basketball. No one gets it. I hear you. I get it. I don't even play. There you go. Don't ref go. All you gotta do is hit that white line. That's what the white line is there for. It's a guide. It says, listen, if you hit the ball here, it'll go in. Pretty much. That's what everyone teaches at practice. But when you come to the games, they're like, yeah, whatever, coach. <laughs> and then you shoot one for 17. There you go. While the other kid on the other team is using the line, shooting eight for 10. What's up? Coming into the game, two of the newest members of the Sixers squad, John D. Oliveira and like Terrell Sutton. I feel like we're not set up right here. So during, ha during the uh, first opportunity I get for a break, I'm going to reassess this uh, evaluation here because it seems like I'm squ squ squished in here. I don't know. I think I set it up in the wrong position. I was all by myself this morning. Yeah, because you've got your chair usually behind. The tripod's usually turned. No, it's usually further out, I thought. No? No. No, the tripod's usually turned so you can put the chair between the two poles. You're kind of jamming yourself against this thing because yeah, it's yeah, yeah. there. Oh, all right, I'll figure it out. I think that's what it is. Nice feels, pass to 40, yeah. Feels awkward. I can't turn Run inside. Camera. Solis with the defense. Sutton looks up, throws it away to Bailey. Bailey is on the Lakers, not the Sixers. Hence the word away. Away. Three to two in favor of the Lakers. Into the game. And Billy Hurley down low where he's best at. Five to two Laker lead. Three and a half to go in the first. Escobar to the Oliveira. Dimitri loses the handle. There's a fight. Sutton. And a reach by Bailey from behind. We are one ref uh, this uh, first opening not many whistles being blown with the one ref. No. Can't see everything. Nope. Waiting on Costa. So, what are you trying to say? There's still only going to be not many whistles blown because there's only going to be one ref. What are you trying to say, Costa? I'm, I'm, huh? just, I'm huh? just trying to huh? say, when Costa's here, usually Coach Amos says, Ah, you blew it again, Costa. <laughs> and I don't mean the whistle. Right. <laughs> nice play by Donnell Bailey going right to the hole. Nice what layup. What a pure point guard would do in this league. That was a good layup, Brad. Good layup. Good strong layup right to the hole. Centered herself. Square to shoulders. Lodemus for three. <laughs> Not often. What uh, we're missing here in the Sixers is Ricky Douglas. That's who we're not missing. Yeah. Here. Well, the Sixers were a little late arriving today. Uh, nice to follow by Bailey. Couldn't get it to go. And 48 with the foul over the back. They only had, uh, what, four or five players to start. And then, like, five players walked in at 20 minutes late. In, in the three and a half feet of snow that we have, it's Ricky up. Douglas is out there snowboarding, I bet. Oh, yeah, probably. I was going to say, some of them haven't, haven't even shown, such as Ricky Douglas. I wonder if John McMillan's with him. Is he, oh, maybe he is. He, you never know. He looks like a snowboarder. I think he said he likes snowboarding. The Oliveira gives it up to Escobar. Blocked by Hurley. Monster block on a kid eight inches shorter. What are you trying to say? It wasn't much uh, effort required? No, I was just saying it was good presence on the defensive end. To step up to a man shorter than you, knowing you can get him. And a nice play right around Hurley. 
Mortimus goes to the hole, back door. Ricky Douglas usually does that move. Well, with Ricky Douglas not being here, you think the Sixers would be able to move the ball around a little bit better? Well, if the Sixers coach would pick up his head and tell his big man to stop going down or coming out so high as Billy Hurley scores another layup, Dimitri Lodemus has to play a smart game today for the Sixers to have a chance. Right now, the Lakers are favored without Douglas being here. Lodemus has to play low. He cannot be in three-point land like he's been. He can't be coming out too high. Yes, he did hit one shot earlier. Then he missed a three. So you need to get inside. Douglas is not here. You need to do everything that a center is supposed to do this game and do it right. That was a very bad pass sequence by the Lakers. They just it went from one person's hand. It was like a hot potato. They, nobody could catch the ball in the Lakers, and the ball went out of bounds. And result, turnover. Fair enough. That's what happened. And stolen by Bailey off the Oliveira by himself. Bailey pretty solid on layups. Doesn't yeah. miss very many, if any. It, it's like a smooth one motion transition from uh, floor to, to the hoop with Bailey. You, you know when he goes up, he doesn't look like he's going to miss it at all. Doesn't look Another awkward. three by Lodemus, which is killing them for rebounds. But Escobar with a nice rebound throws it, it away. away though. Oh, that's a travel. Big move call it. One ref, can't blame him. And Mike Almeida admitted to his coach I was going to travel if I didn't throw it, but he did travel. It just didn't get called. Yeah. We got 50 seconds to go, 11 to 4 in favor of the Lakers. In the first period, 50 seconds. Yes. Just, just the, the first. We have 10 and a half minutes. Yes. You know. Not the second, just the first. A nice play, Bailey to Almeida this time. Oh, he blows the bunny. And there was a foul, but not called. As Jimmy Nguyen tears down the rebound. I wonder if this ref has ever done a like, solo game by himself. Cause he doesn't this seem ref like, has never ref there before. Because he seems like he's not getting into his proper positions as uh, a solo ref would do. And there's one ref, you've got to get into a different position no, so you can see everything. But he's not. He's, he's assuming his normal, regular referee position. Yes, that's Oliveira in the middle. Speaking of in the middle, who's was a famous sixer that played in this league. Regis Ramos, where was he at? In the middle. Okay, that's what we always used. Ooh. When Zhu forgot about the time clock, he was a dribbling fool there. But at the end of one, 11 to 6 in favor of the Lakers, holding that early five point lead, and they are favored by five today without Ricky Douglas being in the house. Really? We'll yeah. go to the unofficial official stats. The officially unofficial. Okay, that too. I like that. That's All my right, thing. Whatever. Right now, the Pistons are on top of the league at 2 and 0. Lakers suffered their first defeat to the Pistons. They are at 2 and 1 right behind them. Um. Ricky Douglas is going to see his stats. But you've got to take in the Ricky Douglas factor of... Uh, He's averaging 22 and a half. Because he doesn't pass. Well, that is true. I'm not saying that. But yeah. without 22 and a half points... Oh, that's big. That's, that's huge. huge. Yeah. The team, uh, the Sixers as a team is averaging 55 what I was and gonna, a half. What, what I was going to say is you've got to take, you, you got to take into the Ricky Douglas factor in... in the 22 and a half points is huge, but he also has a temper to blow up. Oh, he gets a little frustrated as well as Lodemus does. But I'm looking at other things, and you know me. I go by the numbers. I like the numbers. Yes, 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 yes. Lakers are averaging, you know, per game. No one's averaging. Only two people averaging double digits for the Lakers. Really? That's it? Wenzu and Billy Hurley. And what, and what are they? Hurley's at 13. Wen is at 11 and a half. Really? But as a team, they average 48.3. So the Sixers average 55.5. So the Lakers spread the ball out more, but the but well, the Sixers that they but play the Sixers a have team ball. Right, but the Sixers have more scorers on their team, pretty much. If you say so, that's what it sounds like. Uh, well, in defense of the Sixers, Lakers, the uh, Sixers only have two people who average double digits as well. Uh, Douglas 22 and a half, you know, and Lodemus averages 11. But the 55 and a half to 48.3. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's a, a seven-point slide. That's a huge difference for a... Uh, so that would put the Sixers an, a favorite by seven. But without Douglas, you minus the seven. He's averaging 22 and a half. The Lakers are a favorite by 15. Yeah. So I say Lakers by 15. That's what you're saying, Lakers that's by 15. I'm saying. I'm saying Lakers by 10. 10. Fair enough. I'm just going... And I that. never made predictions. Nah, what the heck. Why you not? Look at the numbers. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dickie Solis for two down there in the middle. First year rookie. Sophomore. 
took off his glasses. He's ready to play today. He says he's going to drop 22 in honor of Ricky. Well, he says he's ready to play. Whether he performs, it comes Lotus through. Lotus throws it off 40. Yeah, smart play. Yes, definitely. He was trapped in a corner. Oh, almost. Uh, Carlos Escobar brings the ball up. Couldn't find the handle there. Oh, Louie in with the slippery hands. He just came in from outside. And he was one of the few that were late. And Cliff Williams is not happy. He's snapping. We got to get him. Oh, he's putting Blake Coughlin back in for Carlos. He was screaming, time out, time out. He's heated. He is heated. He, he's, he's, one, he's one of the few that actually don't scream and yell all the time. And this is true. When he does, you know he's mad. to go. Six is down three. Blake Coughlin. What a substitution by the head coach Cliff Williams. You mean a minute and a half gone. Throws it away. You mean a minute and a half gone. You minute said, and a half gone, I mean. You said a minute and a half to go. Yes. A minute and a half gone. Cliff Williams makes a substitution. Blake Coughlin. Beautiful steal. Throws the ball away. That's the reason why he took out Carlos Escobar. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter who he puts in. They're going to throw the ball away. They need to slow down. That's what Cliff Williams was yelling about. He's like, slow down. We don't need it because the Lakers it's have had not a rush. four breakaway opportunities already, resulting in six points. Yep, and the, and the Sixers Look at have plenty of time. They're Couldn't not down blocked by, by Hurley. They're not down by 30 points. They're only down by a few. They, got, they still have a whole second half to play. They need to slow down. Oh, Joseph Joseph, no travel. Gets uh, all the way up, and Dimitri Lodemus over to Coughlin. Good pass. A little awkward, but it went in. The poor commission's doing that uh, book by himself today. Yep, no other coaches are stepping up because there's none here yet. Well, Chris Except Rogers Chris is Rogers. standing behind me. Man. He looks hurting. Yeah, he's not He's not doing too well. No, he, he's denying it, but he still yeah, looks... No. I said I'm not buying it. Look at him. Look at him. We could have Chris Rogers probably go to help do the book. I doubt it, but we could ask. Here he is, looking good today, coach. I don't know what you're talking about. You want to take over the mic? You got a lot to say? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. That would be funny. Well, if he wants to do the camera, I'll do the book. Oh, that's a travel right there. Uh, Good call by the referee. But John Liu is a man on a mission right there. As you're looking at the nice windows that we have here in the Fairway School, Go Ref Go showing you the entire establishment that we have here at the school. You never get to see the, the lights. Oh, shut up. I'm trying to help you. Nice pass to Lou, being defended by Oliveira, trying to go for his. We're slow to the ball. Eye off the ball. Three on one, six a break. Oh, and Chris Rogers is coming to do the book. Chris Rogers, do the book. Follow the ball, follow the ball. Oh, Sean Hickey almost drops a deuce. And Go Ref Go is over there helping Commissioner Mazonson do the book. John Lou ready to light it up. Getting pressured. Get up, get up. Bailey moving the ball well. Hurley gets fouled by Sutton. Big baby Kingston, we call him. Costa. Huh? Supposed to be Costa. Still waiting on referee Costa. We'll lower that just a little, get the windows out of there. There you go. At the line, Billy Hurley shooting two. 11 to 10. Five and a half to go in the first half. Chris Rogers helping on camera. Go ref go helping the commissioner do the book. <clears throat> Coach, Chris Rogers is the king. You're looking at these two games, two teams. Ricky Douglas not in the house. Who do you favor in this game, Lakers or the Sixers? The mic right here. You want the mic? Yeah, take the mic. I was just going to repeat it. Nice pass inside from Hickey, but De Oliveira loses the ball. Bailey moving to the, the hole. Misses the layup, but he gets it right back on the loose ball. Slapped by Escobar. 
I think this game is going to come right down to the wire. You think? I think so. I got the Lakers by 15 without Ricky Douglas. By 15, huh? Yeah, just because of the numbers. Go ref, go has the Lakers by 10. You're saying a close game? Fair enough. I think it's going to be a close game. Unless the Lakers decide to break it open. Right now, they look a little tired. They do look tired. Did they go out last night? I think they were with me. They were at the Sun Kong? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they'd be standing if they were with you. <laughs> I'm surprised you're standing. No! But you slept well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Billy Hurley misses the bunny, but gets it right back from Sean Fortier underneath, putting a four-point lead up, and Costa has entered the building. He's a sleeping lady, went out for a couple Coronas. Next thing you know, he woke up in a snowbank. But he's here now, and he's ready to wrap. Lake Coughlin with that oh. awkward, awkward shot. Very awkward shot. Very awkward. I'm calling him the crab man. This is the crab when he jumps up and blasts into the air. They're putting in the big boys. Lodemus and Solis coming into the game. I heard you were scouting that David, that uh, Dickie Solis over there. I sort of wanted him. I yeah. thought he, he would have he would have helped. into the King's uh, office. Definitely. Oh, oh, that's a shot. poor Bad pass. Shot. All right, well, we'll go with the pass, but Casey Statton with an air ball. They got a box out Sean Fortier. They're just letting them bet, uh, grab all kind of rebounds down there. Solis throws it right up, couldn't get it. <laughs> Lodemus over to Sammy Jean. He didn't even Kid look. Mountain Dew. He didn't even look when he shot that one. No. <laughs> he hasn't looked yet. Actually, there was one shot last week he, shot, he looked at. If and he, he hit it. If Solis just looks at the hoop, he'll score more baskets. He's just worried about getting blocked. He just wants to get it out there. First year sophomore, he's a rookie. He should be traded by midseason. Under tutelage of uh, Cliff Williams, I bet you he'll be, he'll be better in the years to come. Oh, I don't doubt it. <laughs> Cliff Williams, very smart down low player. He's not shy, too, because he's always in the camera. He's never out of the way. Stands right where the camera is. Lodemus misses the first attempt. Misses the second. Hurley with the easy rebound. Ooh, almost stolen by Kid Mountain Dew. Bailey, oh, it would have been a nice pass to Bill Saint, he but he wasn't looking. He wasn't ready for that. Dickey going in the middle. He's not even thinking about passing. He gets that ball. I think Cliff just tells him launch it. Big body moving people around. Bailey with another steal. Very relaxed. In control point guard. Wenzu into the game, firing. Bailey catches it. Oh, around. poor Hurley. effort trying to get that rebound. Oh, uh, Hurley follows his own shot. Sixers are not doing anything down on the rebounding end. No. There's no real aggressiveness. Glodimus is too interested in breaking down the other end. No Ricky Douglas is going to kill him. And they got a short team, except for him and Dickey. So one side is going to be very weak. And Hurley's exploiting it already. Oh, my goodness. There goes Bailey again. Just runs right by him. He has no left, so he missed that one. That's what I keep hearing in the audience. No left. Sammy Jean just uh. should have gave it up. When the back door action could have dragged his foot, could have been a travel. 20 to 10 for a combination of 30 here in the Ferryway School. Minute and a half to go in the first half. Lake is starting to open. If it ends right now, go ref go, it'd be dead on. Oh my goodness. Oh, another poor shot, but Dickie right there. Oh. He passes it off the backboard to Dimitri. I don't know why he pulled that ball. Should've just went up, he might've gotten fouled. That's what fouled. he does, he thinks he's Kevin Garnett. He might've gotten if fouled. If he stays he down low, he draws some fouls. Oh, he gave up on the defense. See how Bailey just ran right by Lodemus who didn't even try to run? He has like no oomph left in him right now. 
too worried about his pants being all baggy and just play ball. Uh, Co Coach Higgins, uh, I just happened to look up at the <laughs> at the banners and the Kings. Yeah, we saw that. The Kings have been fixed and the Kings have now been <laughs> knocked down. They just want to just. They're probably gonna just bury that banner. <laughs> yeah. Just take it down. Take it down. I don't know how that happens. They fixed the Pistons and then the Kings have fallen. Why? Because the Kings and Pistons are playing later today. That's not right. Maybe Paul snuck into the gym and uh. A little less window. Right there? Lower it. Lower the camera shot. There you go. Too much glare. There we go. One and one. First ball is live. Bailey hits the first. Let's see what Bailey is on the line on the unofficial official stats. Lakers as a team, as a team, leads the league in free throw percentage. He misses that one, but Hurley's right there. Hurley grabs another rebound. Puts it right back in where he's supposed to be. Sixes didn't box, box him out. Bailey is a 52.9% free throw shooter. He got one of the two, but Hurley got his points. No foul there. Staten with the rebound. Throws it to Bailey. Out of bounds. I uh, think I might have been wrong with my prediction. <laughs> I don't think yeah, it's going to be close. to pick it up. They're up 15. That's all. If it ends now, I'd be dead on. We're doing good. But again, Ricky Douglas better walk through that intermission uh, halftime through that, into that locker room and get ready. Where is he? I heard he's snowboarding. Oh. Oh, well, there's plenty of snow out there for him. He's uh, snowboarding down in Melrose, I think. They don't really have any snowboard area, but he's going to use another Aaron pass by the Sixers. Foul by Sammy Jean. Bailey going back to the line for another one on one. Snowboarding, huh? Got all day to snowboard. That you do. But you don't have all day for the lights. But there's places that have lights. This place in North Andover, nice little ski resort up there. I've been there. I tried snowboarding for about 14 seconds, didn't like it. Hurley got in there early. The, rebound. the Sixers were asleep on the rebound. Hurley uncontested layup. These Sixers Six. are not boxing anybody out. They're not even. They're not aggressive nor boxing out. Sammy Jean for a deep three. That'll help. Nope, and that's no good. So at the end of one quarter, it's 27 to 13 in favor of the Lakers. We will see you in the second half. Welcome back to second half action. Hello, yeah, works too. 27 to 13, combo of 40. Brad with Ah, uh, I said it during. I oh. said it during the break. You can't steal it. You I, can't steal I it. I said it on TV. Oh. Well, I was. I couldn't. That's uh, your fault. Um, the Sixers need to do something down low. It's their rebounding that's killing them. They know that. The coaches are smart enough to pick up on it. It's just, will they do something about it is the question. Oh, that's a carry. Yep, and that's what that's crossed a good the call. Very good call. Jolly good try I got. That Whoa, was what the hell's going on? Alicorn. Jolly good try we got from uh, Terrell Sutton. Beanie oh Amos. Get something in the middle. Wrong with this thing here. Lead down to 12. Minute gone. Cost is here. The other referee feels better about that. I don't know if the, the coaches do, but the other ref does. All right. A little jumpy here for the next minute, but a little I jumpy. A lot jumpy. Wen Zhu with the rim job didn't unlock that elbow. As GoRef goes, making everybody so oh, nice steal by Bailey. Ah, much better now. Much better. See, I told you he needed to be moved over. Alicorn. He's making the effort, and Coach Amos is I missed starting it. to get a little animated. I missed it. That's all right. He didn't do it very often. The, the Lakers, without Billy Hurley in the middle right now, are a little discombobulated. Eh, you know. They have three of their starters in there. Only two subs. But they don't seem like they're on page. It's only what? a minute in, minute and a half. 
Sixers see some things that they need to fix. I have it right there. Well, the Lakers were strong in the first half, but, uh, oh, actually, I don't know if you could say if the, the Lakers were strong in the first half or the Sixers were just weak, but nonetheless, it's 27-15. The timeout's over. The teams have broken up, but Cliff Williams is still on the court talking to one of his players. Cliff Williams, sixth man, should have been a technical. Almost could have been. Could have, would have, should have, but just wasn't. Escobar into the game. Sammy Jean, Coughlin, Sutton, and Lodemus. Sixers are a little more patient now. This is what they need to be. There's absolutely no hurry. There's no shot clock. And all these kids think there's a shot clock. Well, maybe something. Is there a shot clock in high school? No. No? Actually, no, there is. Yeah. 30 seconds. That's what I thought. So maybe they're but thinking. But this is in high school. But maybe they got that mentality. They never played high school. How could they? So maybe some of them have. No, yeah, I know Billy Hurley did. All right. So there you go. Bench. Okay. There goes Bailey with an uncontested layup. He does Bailey that so layup. smoothly. He's lazy today. Bailey does that uncontested layup so smoothly. Yeah, if you're not going to play defense, there's no reason for you to miss an open layup. Well, yeah, but you know some of these kids in this league, they Another do it all three the time. Another three by Sammy Jean. Lodemus gets a rebound, puts his head down, throws it to Sammy Jean. Beautiful pass, and it just stays on. Wenzu, wide open. Still can't get it to fall. A push off by Almeida. Almeida went over the back and pushed him. Got the rebound. Coughlin goes over to Sammy Jean to Escobar. Tried to get it inside. Ball bounced off some poor boy's head. Went flying. Sutton couldn't handle, handle it, so... Goes back the other way. Alicorn misses it, but Wen Zhu makes it right. Jimmy Nguyen, player, coach, talking smack. Might find him in a snowbank later on tonight. Who's he talking smack to? I think his own player, so it's all good. No worries. He's the enforcer on the team. He bulked up about three, four ounces. You know, you've used that line way too much since that time. No, you actually, used I put on, <laughs> last week was two ounces. He put on three or four. Zoo goes right past him. Overshoots and over the back. The man with power now. There goes John D. Oliveira penetrating the hole off the glass. Five minutes to go, 31-19 in favor of the Lakers, a combo of 50. I had it, I was looking at it, I was going to say it, but I'm like, eh. I'm actually on point today, I don't know why. I was before I had to get off camera, now I'm yeah, doing my did, game all you off. went to help with the book, that does throw you off a little, especially sitting next to the commissioner. Yes. He's probably chirping in the air, making sure you're doing everything right. No, no. All right. Yeah, I had confidence. Okay, fair enough. He was watching, but he, you know, wasn't really He's chirping. confident in you, really? Huh? Confident in you? Well, I don't know. There All you right. go. Sean Fortier. Very good patience. Squared up, turned around, faced the rim, looked at the rim, and shot it. Something you don't see down there, this part. Patience like, and someone who looks. Sounds like everything you're supposed to do. Pretty much, yeah. Sean Fortier is a very solid player down low. Traveling by Dickie Solis. And it was a travel. It's a good call by the refs. Son of Michael Solis. 
Big Dave, Big Dicky. Did Michael Solis, a former uh, MNBL uh, player? Yes. So you know the league has been around for a while when you've got the Suns. 24 the years. Next year is the 25th year. Big 25. And Coach huh? Higgins of the Kings, 20th year. Oh, yeah? Next huh? year. But that would mean that would be Coach Wright's 25th year. Correct him or no? Coach uh, Amos is uh, 24th. 24th. Yes. Yep. Okay. Day two. Day one, day There two. he is right in the right corner. Day two. Now he's on the court. Is that six man? No, timeout. Oh, okay. no, no, it wasn't a timeout. No, it was on the court. Refs didn't see it. It's Could foul? It's foul. No, jump ball. I was right. Why, do these, why is Costa trying to confuse me? I don't know. I don't get it. I don't think it was Costa. It was One the forty year. Taps it right to Staten, who couldn't get it to go. But he tries to steal it again. And Oliveira gets tripped up by Staten, who gets the loose ball again. Hot potato, hot potato, hot potato. Almeida trying to reward Staten, who goes up. Kind of awkward, but Billy Hill is there again for another layup. Tell you, Billy Hurley is the savior for that Lakers team in this game today. Basic layups. They're just garbage points, you can call them. They're good points, but they're garbage points. But he's where he's supposed to be, so it's not right. his fault. He's doing what he's supposed to do. And Oliveira takes his eyes off the ball. Well, that ball was too high for him anyway. He, he would have finger-tipped it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He never left his feet. That's true, but he would have finger-tipped it. Yeah. Well, right now, the Sixers have turned the ball over 78 times. You better be kidding me. I am. Okay. I, they have turned the ball over at least. Well, 10. you're the number guy. I thought you were keep a track on that well, stuff. All right, I'll put it this way. Billy Hurley, another layup. Uh, they turned the ball over at least a dozen times. I, I buy that. I probably okay. buy. I probably buy. Times. I I'd probably buy if you said it, if you said 20 times, it'd probably be okay. Accurate. Because, I mean, I've been watching the game even though I wasn't on camera earlier, and it's, it seems like the Sixers are just giving the ball back to the Lakers every time they get it. And when the Lakers get the ball, they're not doing anything to get it back. Although I, I say that, and they just did. But then they give it right back to the Lakers again. So yeah. see what I mean? <laughs> That's true. Not a kick ball if he doesn't move his foot. All right. I just found out. Okay, now you go. That's all right. Everybody. Call, but it was wrong. Everybody's a referee. Oh, I heard a slap. I did too, but you know. But Hurley goes up again, misses that one. What do we got here? Foul? We got a foul. Sean Hickey coming in to be the enforcer. Got his mouthpiece in. He's going in to do damage. Got his, he's got his grill face on. He's ready to go. I mean, look. His game face. First round. First round now. See if Hurley hits the first one. Nope. Really missed the first one. He is the leading scorer of the game right now for the Lakers. And, and period, for that matter. On uh, both teams. <laughs> Easy layups. That can help anybody. Yep. But he missed the first free throw. And missed the second free throw. The Lakers, uh, Brad, were 4 for 7 at the line in the first half. Well, Sixers turnover again. That's 15. See, Brad, I threw out a statistic. You did? That was good. I told you I was on point. Just needed Four my... for seven. That's not many attempts. No. But it's a great percentage. Yes. Ooh, a foul by Hickey, but Almeida gets the basket anyway. You know how I know that? How do you know? Because when I was doing the book, uh, Coach Amos came over to ask what his oh. free throw percentage was. So we kind of came over to count his free throws. His free throw percentage would be 680. Oh, yeah. Well, I came over to see how many he missed and how many he hit. Ah. So I counted it for him. And I went, oh, they went four for seven. Don't know how those sixes did. Huh? The Vegas not here? I talked to him and told him. His phone's dead. Out of bounds, still stays six a ball. Inbound pass is broken up by Bailey, I believe that was. Yes. Oliveira right through his legs at 16 turnovers. Uncontested layup. Again by Bailey. You know, I tell you, doing the book, uh, Brad, it's helped me learn the players' names and numbers and stuff. It does. Another block by Hurley. Tries to see, trying to get that ball up. He does. Now Mito wide open. Oh, the ball. Him, buddy. He rushed that shot, Brad. That's all right. It's 41-19, combo of 60. He was heading up. He was heading up. The Lakers don't have to worry about that missed shot. 
I know, but he was heading up to the hoop before he even got the ball, Brad. That is true. He was off balance. Good vision there by Gorevko. Another turnover. Told you, I'm on point today. Had that cup of coffee this morning, and I'm ready to go. Yeah, but you see the combo of 60 I called out? I'm not even paying attention to that. <laughs> but your stats are on! <laughs> we got 103 to go in the third, and the Lakers are opening it up. 22 points. So much for both of our predictions, huh? Yeah. The 22 well, points is the Ricky Douglas difference. That is, 22 and a half. Well, seeing that we don't play half points, we're in the range. That is true. Well, someone did hit the rim earlier, so... <laughs> that doesn't count as a half point. No, not really, but it was worth a shot. Bailey can... All the Lakers have to do is just play keep away anyway. For, the, really next, no for the next ten and a half minutes. A that's three it. attempt by Bailey. It's in but the they third quarter. But they can afford to hit that. And though. Jimmy Nguyen didn't pick his head up. And the, the Sixers, Sixers are stopping. They're not playing they're this game. They're complaining about the non-call. They're not playing this game, Brad. They're not... They haven't been playing this game since halfway through the second period. It's been, they just stopped playing at some point in this game, Brad. It's just, uh, just showing in the scoreboard. Foul by 40 air from behind. Brad, the Lakers can afford to hit or shoot wild, wild oh, three-point shots because they're up by so many. Right, but they don't really need to take threes. But but, the, but if, if you got it, take it. Yeah, especially in the third quarter. Yeah, why not? Escobar with a wide open layup. This way, if the Sixers make a somewhat com somewhat of a comeback, you still got Down plenty to 20. of time. Oh yeah, it's only 10 baskets. It's nothing. Yeah. Don't look at the numbers. Look at how many baskets it is to come back. You look at the numbers, you make yourself sick. Staten for an air ball. That's the second one of the day from three-point land. He keeps shooting them. Bailey missed the stay. That was barely hitting the rim. Four seconds. So who's Bailey hits the layup. At the end of the buzzer, 22-point lead, 43-21 to 21 in favor of the Sixers, who, who are basically giving up. I, I've seen the Sixers give up. Well, you heard what I said. They stopped playing halfway through the second period. Yeah. So. Well, and then they're complaining about no calls, but yet the play's still going on, Well, it's f and you're standing around watching them. You know, it's kind of, that's sort of predictable, because when the team is just being as frustrated as the Sixers are by their non-play, Yep. They got to turn somewhere to blame it on somebody, and you know they're not going to blame themselves. No, no, they did nothing wrong, even though they threw the ball away 17, 17 times. times. Yeah. yeah. Sad, very sad. Very, very. Take one of those later. <laughs> there, may, there may not be any later. No, that's all right. They got two kinds. They're stale though. Check the date. I don't care, they still pay for it. That's true. So Brad, who we got coming up in the second game? Second game, I believe we have the, the Celtics, who pulled off a victory last week against the Hawks to uh, make sure they weren't a winless team this weekend. Dropping the Hawks to 0-2. The Celtics are now 1-1, one and, one, and Sean Hickey's out there arguing. Why is he arguing? Because that's Sean Hickey. He's got some fire in him, that young Hickey. I like that. Look at him, look at him. He's, he's hulking up. He needs to hulk up the rest of his team, though. I wonder if he's a real American. Takes his vitamins, says his prayers, hangs and bangs. He is a Hickey. It's his last year. He's a senior. Three years senior this year. Cliff Williams is going to miss him, so. By the way, i got to tell you about the wrestler. Oh, I, uh, did you bring it? No, I didn't bring it. I'm going to bring it Thursday. I'm not going to give it to you to make copies. I'll never get it back. <laughs> you make a copy and then hand it back to you. I made a copy at MATV today and gave it right back to you. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know we were going to MATV afterwards. I thought we were... Every Sunday we go to MATV to copy the book. Oh, I didn't know that. Sorry. I'll still forget that again, but, you know. Yeah. It's all right. I have it on a computer. Yeah, but I'll give, bring it... Uh, Tuesday we can make a copy while we're shooting TNT. Go. Yeah, six, four minutes. That's it? Four, five, yeah. It's not a long movie, but it's... Nice a, pass it's up front to Coffin and lose the ball! The wrestler is a good movie. I'm trying to figure out who it could be, who it could be about, but it basically could be about any independent wrestler who's ever made it and then came back again. Kind of reminds me a little of... um. 
when I looked at him, he has a look like Jericho. Yeah, I was thinking. But then when I thought about it and I, I watched the first kind of like hour, Brian Pillman. I was thinking, uh, got the body of Brian Pillman. Yeah. Then I watched the first half hour, like I said, and it you reminded seen the me whole of movie? A, a Brutus the Barber Beefcake as an indie worker. You haven't seen the whole movie? No, the first half hour. But you got to watch the whole movie. This I know. In I there. will. When I make a copy on Tuesday. Yeah. It's a good movie. I, I didn't want to watch will, the whole movie will, because of that. I will tell you one thing about the ending. I did not like it. Well, I'm not sure if I didn't like it or not, but I know it's definitely an awkward ending. Okay. <laughs> that's all I'll say. Yeah, that's all you need to say. I've been getting reviews from everybody, so... It's, it's, a, it's an all right movie. I'd give it, I like, it was good. three stars, maybe. I, not a four or five star movie, but, you know. Well, we got a final 824 to go. Alicorn being harassed. Bill Saint being harassed. Oh, and I gotta tell you, I'll tell you Joseph, Joseph into the game explodes to the rim. I'll tell you the rest later, off camera. She should have played a part. Yeah, 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 yeah. At the line, Joseph, Joseph. Misses the front end of the one and one. Six has got a push. They're down 14. Down 14 is better than being down by 20. I mean 24, sorry. 22. There you go. Come on, Six. Let's score seven points. <laughs> They're still going to lose, but make it respectable. Yeah, why not? Unless they do something very drastic in the next seven minutes. I don't see that happening, Brad. When Zoof switches hands, draws the foul. Even the, you know, I got to tell you, Brad, I, mean, I was complaining about the cold earlier. When I was down doing the, on the floor doing the book, even the players who are playing were complaining about how cold it was in here. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Well, it's, it feels a little colder in here. Something... They must have the door open downstairs and the draft's coming right up the stairwell. Because I've never felt it this cold. And it's not that cold out. It's snowing out, but it's not that cold. 27 degrees. That's not that cold. Feels not like for New England weather. Feels like about 20 degrees. Coughlin, jumper, no good. Dimitri with a follow. A jump ball with Alicon. We got a jump ball. Thank you, Kamish. Now let's see who's going to win this jump. It's a tough one. Yeah, you think? Yeah. Mm. My money's on... Uh, mm. Not sure. Okay. It was close. Yeah, that's who I put. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Terrell does a travel. And they got it. And he's complaining that he didn't travel. You just moved six feet. How would it send out a travel? <laughs> Stop complaining and play the game. You're taking your head out of your own game. Brad, what did I say earlier? You got to blame somebody else because yep. you know they oh, ain't making any mistakes. pass. And the uh, Lakers are just picking up every loose ball. Well, I would too if Back I were the Lakers. defense right there. Oh, loose ball. So we got the Celtics and the Pistons second, second No, game? Pistons and the Kings play last. Oh, right. And I'll tell you in two seconds. 5.20 to go in the game. 23-point lead for the Lakers. You know, with the Lakers... Air ball. With the Lakers Coughlin. victory this year, uh, this game, rather, I'm uh, rooting for the Kings in the third. third. Sorry, sorry, uh... Pistons fans, but... Uh, well, yeah. hey, you know, you have, nobody wants to see anyone undefeated. Especially in the early season. By the Pistons, 2-0? 2-0. And the Kings are 0-2, right? I'd like to see the Kings get their first win of the year. That would be nice. I agree. I'd like to see it, too. I bet you would. I'll be downstairs cleaning off my truck, but... Well, you can watch the games when they air on MATV. You could go to atrlive.com, or you go to mnbl19. You can go to the, uh, MATV channels 3 and 15. That's if you have Monday Comcast. through Wednesday. That's if you have Comcast. Yes. And if you have Verizon, it's 3 and 29. 3 and 29. No, it's not 3 and 29. It's not 3 anymore. 3 is ABC. 20-something. You know, it's... Yeah, 29, that's it, something like that. But anyway, you have plenty, you have plenty of opportunities to see. 
Look at this. The Sixers actually drove to the hoop. And, and Sammy Jeans, one of the smallest kids on the court. Not the smallest, but one of them. One of yes. Draws right. the foul down the middle. Celtics versus the Sonics. Sonics are the home team. Celtics are one and one. The Sonics are one and one. Oh, it's an evenly matched uh, record-wise. So one of those teams matched. will have two wins, and one will have two losses. Th they, I knew you'd pick that up. Eight, huh? I'm telling you, that coffee in the morning works. I guess so. I only had a couple sips because they put no sugar in Did it. Did your driver pay for it? No, I have Three a, by Sutton. No, I have a holiday gift card. So I've been Big Baby Kingston hits the triple. He should have paid for it, but he didn't. He didn't even want to stop. <laughs> Sammy Jean going to the hole. I got to tell you that. I got to tell you that story. Before Phone's up. blowing up as usual. Real. What's up? He's shooting a three. He's he's 0 for 2 now. 0 for 3? Fans are telling me 0 for 3. There's a spot check on Dimitri Lodimus. Joseph getting harassed. Stolen by Gene Oliveira. Does he blow the bunny? Yep. No. Nope. Thought it was going lucky. Twenty-one point difference. Yep. By the way, Brad, you said there was something you wanted to tell me. Uh, yeah. At the end. Just remind me. Again. Yeah, no, it's not important. It's just tomorrow. What? Tomorrow will be the ninth year anniversary of my mother. Oh. That's why when you were like the date is the 18th, I'm like, oh god. It kicked in my head. Sorry. Ah, just, just reminded me of that. Alicon misses both, but John Lou pulls it in the Lodimus. Doesn't even defend him. One and one, going to the line. 2.38 to go, 50 to 28. 22 point lead. It's combo, 78. Okay. Eat the coffee, I'm telling you, it must have been spiked. No, it had no sugar in it. I was mad, I only got like four sips of it. You just called me, blowing up my phone during the game. Very rude. Yeah! No, it was actually Dan oh. the Man from Wrestling Center fame, who's on audio. Oh, calling me to ask was for a ride to Oak Grove at 3 o'clock. For what? From where? Sammy Jean for three. From his house. He lives around the corner from me. Oh. Oliveira for three. Nope. Front rims it. You know, he is the... John uh, Lou with a nice pass to Joseph Joseph. Dan is uh, the one-man crew for TNT. Yeah. I've got to talk to you about that off-camera too, by the way. Got to set up arrangements. Figure out what's going on that night. Lou for three. There goes Oliveira. Gives it to Escobar. Blows the bunny. Underhand layups. Common sense. Look at that. Underhand layup. Misses it. <laughs> A traveling violation on Wen Zhu. Two minutes remaining in the uh, travel. Gets away with it, but he gets the basket. Two minutes remaining in the, in the game, Brad. Correct the mundo. And it's 50 to 30. It's a combo of 80. 80, yes. I'll give you that one. Yes, you are correct. 50 to 30. Zoo for the jumper. Still misses. I don't think he's got an outside shot today. Minute 40. Oliveira with the ball. Back door. Misses it. Lodimus. Rebound. No good. He's got like eight inches on everyone down there, and he lost the ball. Dimitri just does not seem into this game. Well... I don't know what happened. The I, entire maybe something personal. The entire Sixers know. team doesn't seem into this game, Brad. Escobar coming the other way. Gives it a Lodimus. 
who tries to tap and misses it. There goes Sammy Jean, good defense. What well, stolen by Escobar. Looks like two oh, on two. Waited too long. Looks like two on two basketball, Brad, because uh, the rest of the teams were down the other end. Yeah. Just well, watch, just watching that back and forth. Well, they were just watching that back and forth action. Yeah. We're under a minute, 50 to 30. By the way, you got to hold it up because when you hold it down here, it can't hear. Okay. Fair enough. Sammy Jean harassing Lou. Alicorn with the ball. Six is a st up chopper, at least hustling. You gotta uh, get this crew away from the table. Uh, Brad. 30 seconds. Alicorn misses the first. Dimitri coming up the other end. Gives it to Sammy Jean for three. Misses it. Oliveira. Hits the ball. Coming up, Bill Saint over to Wenzu. Trying to get another basket here. Hey guys, knocks it around. Up to Lodemus, who can't miss this one. Five seconds. And that's the ball game. The final score, 50 to 34. Lakers win by 16. I was off by one. Wow, what did you say? 15. Oh, yeah, that's right. So we'll give you that. We'll give you that one, Brad. All right, I'll take one. Yo, it's nice, Coach. All right. Yo, it's good. This is tough loss. But again, I said going by the numbers, they were going to lose by about 15. They lost by 16. Uh, I guess Douglas not here. 22 and a half points per game is what was made the difference. Sammy Jean just could not hit his threes. He hit one, but I, he tried. I guess I was giving the sixes, uh, sixes a little. Lazy defense is what I think killed him. They they didn't really attempt anything. They weren't aggressive on the rebounding, and that really hurts any team. You win by rebounding and defense, and those are the two things they lack today. So in turn, the Lakers improved to three and one. Sixers dropped to one and two. Go ref. I guess I was giving the Sixers a little bit extra credit when I gave them the 10 point uh, loss, but nonetheless, I did predict the uh, Lakers lose, uh, winning, by the way. So. Yeah, the Sixers, they a lot of hustle at the end, especially up top with D'Olivera and uh, Sammy Jean hustling at, all the way to the last buzzer. Well, uh, after the second half of the, of the second period, the Sixers just got frustrated with themselves or with whatever and they just stopped they just stopped playing i don't know what they were thinking but they weren't thinking defense that's for sure and uh that cost them yeah it did and i got jimmy newion over here yelling over for some love but the boy turned the ball over 17, 17 times, times so yes 17 out of the 22 can't. yeah 17 out of 22 all uh, right he had no blocks today no dunks and no fouls but you know for go no points either Bradley so Benton, chris rogers for a little bit We'll see you at the next games.